A small airplane leaves an airport on an overcast day and is later soft 215 kilometers away in a direction making an angle of 22 degrees east of north. How far east and north is the airplane from the airport when soft? Let us analyze the problem first. We are given a magnitude of 215 kilometers and the angle of 22 degrees east of due north. We would need a rectangular coordinate system to graph this vector displacement with a positive direction of x due east and y due north. Let us say that our airport is in 0, 0 because it is the origin of the airplane. The next thing we will do is to graph the magnitude. In the given problem, the airplane flew at 22 degrees east of due north. Using our protractor, we will measure 22 degrees with 0 degree at the positive y-axis, which is our reference frame. Then, from our airport, the point of origin, the airplane flies 215 km. Before you graph this, again, you would need an appropriate scale. Say, 1 cm is to 43 km. So we can have 5 cm here when we draw this. And let us label this magnitude as vector A. The airplane's displacement, let's say D, is where the airplane is soft. Let us go back in the question. How far east and north is the airplane? This question asks for the east and north component of the final vector. A component of a vector is the projection of the vector on an axis. To find for the east component, which lies in the x-axis, we can represent it as a sub x, while for the north component, which lies in the y-axis, we can represent it as a sub y. To find the projection of a vector along an axis, we draw perpendicular lines from the two ends of the vector to the axis. The projection of this vector in x-axis is called its x-component, and similarly, the projection on the y-axis is called y-component. The process of finding this component, remember, of a vector is called vector resolution. Now that we have determined the projection in right angle, we can find the components of vector geometrically by the equation x component is equal to magnitude of vector A multiplied by cosine theta and for y component, magnitude of vector A multiplied by sine theta. Using this angle here, which is 68 degrees, we perform operations. To get x component, we will use equation 1. Let us substitute the values. 215 km multiplied by cosine 68 degrees and you will get 81 kilometers. For y component, we will use this equation number 2 and have 215 km multiplied by sine 68 degrees and our answer would be 199 kilometers. We therefore can say that the airplane is flying 81 km east and 109 km north of the airport. I hope this is clear. Let us have example number 2. Suppose you exert three different forces at an object initially at rest in different angles. First, you apply 25 newtons at 60 degrees, 10 newtons at 180 degrees, and 16 newtons at 315 degrees. What is your resultant vector? The first thing we will do is to plot these values in a rectangular coordinate system. Here, we will make a graph with 0 degree at positive x-axis, 90 degrees at positive y-axis, 180 degrees at negative x-axis, and 270 degrees at negative y-axis. Before you draw these values in your coordinate system, we have to choose an appropriate scale. We can use 1 cm is to 1 newton, since these three values have no common factor. We will assign 25 newtons at 60 degrees as vector A, then 10 newtons at 180 degrees as vector B, and 16 newtons at 315 degrees as vector C. The goal of this problem is to find the resultant vector, or the total force you applied in moving that object. From our previous discussions and examples, we knew that it is a lot easier to find the resultant vector when we plot these values as right triangle, right? To do this, we need to find component vectors of individual vector. Let us start with vector A. 
we will draw an arrow in the x-axis to represent the x-component of vector a. And then, after its tail, we draw another arrow along y-axis to represent the y-component of vector a. Using the formula that we had, a sub x is equal to magnitude of vector a, which is 25 newton, multiplied by cosine 60 degree, we get the x component as 12.5 newtons. For the y component, we multiply again the magnitude, but this time by sine 60 degree, and we will get 21.7 newtons. Now, we have values of both x and y component of vector a. We can plot this in a table, so you can have more organized computation. For vector a, its x component is 12.5 newtons, and its y component is 21.7 newtons. We will do the same with vector b. Notice in our vector b that it lies exactly at the negative x-axis. Therefore, we can say that the y component is 0 and that our x component is 10 newtons, which is the value of your magnitude. Even if you perform this using our formula, you will get the same result. It is important to note as well that it lies in negative x component or negative x axis. So we will use negative sign to represent this value. In our table for our vector b, we add negative 10 newtons for x component and 0 for y component. Let us have now vector c. This vector lies at 315 degrees between positive x axis and negative y axis. We can get this angle by subtracting 315 by 270, which is 45 degree. Then, we will plot our x component of vector c along the x axis and y component on negative y axis. We will use the same formula where we have to multiply the magnitude of the vector c, which is 16 newtons, by cosine 45 degrees to get the x component. Our answer will be 11.31. Same thing for y component, only that we will multiply this magnitude by sine 45 degree and you will have 11.31. Remember that this y component here lies in negative x axis and therefore we need to add a negative sign. We will include this in our table where the x component of vector z is 11.31 newtons and the y component is negative 11.31 newtons. After we get all the x and y components of individual vectors, we will get their sum. In our table, we will add 12.5 newtons, negative 10 newtons, and 11.31 newtons to have the total x component 13.8 newtons. Then, we will do the same for y component, 21 newtons plus 0 newton plus negative 11.31 newtons and our sum will be 10.4 newtons. Now that we have our final x and y components, we can plot these values in our rectangular coordinate system, where in our x component, we have 13.8 newtons and for y component, we have 10.4 newtons. Notice that both x and y components are positive. That is why we plotted them in the positive side of our Cartesian plane. Since x and y are now perpendicular with one another, we can get this resultant vector by applying the Pythagorean theorem. We substitute the values 13.8 newton squared plus 10.4 newton squared. We will have 298.6 newton squared. Then we will get this square root to find the resultant vector. Our resultant vector would be 17.3 newtons. We can recall again that to get this angle, we use tangent function, opposite side over adjacent side. Our opposite side is 10.4 newtons and our adjacent side is 13.8 newtons. When we get the inverse of this, our final angle would be 37 degrees. And that's it. After computation, our resultant vector is 17.3 newtons at 37 degrees. What do you think is the direction? You can comment your answer in the comment section below. Let us review what we had. In adding two or more vectors not perpendicular with one another, we need to find their individual x and y components by formula 
magnitude multiplied by cosine theta for x component and magnitude multiplied by sine theta for y component. After that, we will find the final x and y components of these vectors by algebraically adding them. Once you form right triangle, you can run Pythagorean theorem to get the resultant vector and finally tangent function to get the angle. I hope everything is clear. If you have questions, do not hesitate to message me in our course message or post a comment in this video or you can start a discussion in our BBL. Okay? Again, this is Gilmar DiCastro and see you in the next video.